Hola guys and girls and welcome to the GBA week 5 match. We are up against the Tennessee Travis coached by none other than Death Lee Aim. We are of course going into this match going 4-0 oh, well as our opponent sadly has the reverse record of that. And yeah, as, as sorry as I am, we of course plan to keep that record going for him because that means that our record will keep going as well. This is the official halfway mark of the season or better said after this match it's the official halfway mark of the season this is the fifth match of the 10 week regular season so if you could get a win right here going five and oh in the first half it would be amazing for our race for the players and would solidify our spot very greatly we basically would have to lose out on the next five weeks to not make playoffs which is I mean I guess it can happen but we're definitely not playing for that to happen so um, yeah so that's the uh, for the rest of the history of the match. I never battled definitely before. It's the first time we are in one one league together. So I'm looking forward to this match. And before we hop into team preview and all this good stuff, of course the shoutouts at the beginning of the match go this time once again to Neon Zero and Gold Door Dragon for joining my team and recording the match for me. The links will be in the description. They were for the past four weeks. So if you did not check them out at this point, uh, I have to question why. Why do you hate me? Why do you, do you not like listening to me? So, and if you uh, did already, then um, yeah, I guess this is useful information for you. But either way, of course, check them out. That's all I'm gonna ask. They help me out with the content I create right here. So if you like this league content I put out, they are in part responsible for that as well. So thank them as well by just giving them a look on their Twitter and YouTubes. And yeah, that's basically all for that. Now going on to team preview. I of course did upload a team builder yesterday. You can check out the team right there and all detail about my moves, IEVs, what my plan is, what his biggest threats are. I go there in detail about that. But for all which don't have time for that, very quick overview. First we got the Speedy Bulky, Rocky Helmet, Jirachi, uh, Fizzy Defensive Mandibus, Troy Scarf Landris, Life Orb for Attacks Deoxys, Groundium Z, uh, Kion Black and Assault Destined Azumarill. Looking at the opponent's team, he brought the Tapu Fini, the Mega Aggron, Neo Lego, the, uh, the um, what's called U Turn Mount Flygon, Goffertel, and Kieran White. And the first big thing we noticed, of course, is that there's no Hooper Unbound, which was a huge threat, in my opinion, versus me. I had no safe switch into that thing. I tried to build a man of us to take it on, but there was, was always one set of Hooper which I couldn't deal with. So yeah, very happy to not see that thing, so I can use my Mandibus mainly for the Flygon, which seems to be his only real physical attacker, barring Mega Aggron, but Mandibus doesn't really beat Mega Aggron on the one, since it's, it's, I don't, I can't really touch it. So yeah, other than that, I'm not too surprised to see the Neo Lego be brought for the first time, so I'm excited to see what that does, and a bit scared of it, uh, that as well, and the rest is no big surprise. Mega Aggron, I was seeing that, the Tapu Fini I was seeing, the Kion Bite I was seeing, and the Gothel I was seeing, like I said, Neo Lego and Flygon, were a bit iffy. I was definitely seeing Hooper on bound there, and then I was surprised, of course, that there's no Staraptor, which is usually his choice scarfer of choice. So, something of these things is probably his choice scarfer then, because he needs something to outspeed my, uh, what you call it, my Deoxys, I want to assume. So, most likely it's gonna be uh, Flygon or Neo Lego, I want to say, but we will have to scout for that in the match. So, before we hop into this game, this I, of course, do post -com, so I can tell you that before. But if you watch Deathly's live, he does live commentating, so if you want to check out the live side, definitely check out his channel. We deceit a lot in this match, so... And this is now the final version, like this is the only one got which we got to the end. So, there is some recreating going on, thankfully it's only in the first few turns, and after that I can narrate it normally. But in the original game, I did lead with Mandibus. Right here I lead with Draji, and I will explain to you why once all that happens, but just so you have the same experience as... Or at least a similar experience if you were to watch the live version. But either way, I decided to lead with Mandibus on my end since I either predicted him to lead with, or most likely predicted him to lead with Flygon, and uh, Mandibus, of course, my check to that can U turn out versus that. And if he leads with Mega Aggron, I can U turn out versus that thing as well since I'm faster than it. And uh, yeah, that's why I decided to lead with Mandibus. Like you can see right here, I lead with Tadrachi because, like you can already see from the uh, um, set up of the teams in this preview. He leads with Fanny on that made me hard switch into my Jirachi. And that's why I'm go gonna hard switch into Jirachi right here as well. Because what he showed on the first turn was th that he did go for Calm Mind. And uh, yeah, I did switch to my Jirachi, did go for Calm Mind, and versus the Calm Mind plus one uh, Finny, I just did it go straight for Iron Head to just scout the damage and get some chip damage on him because I have nothing to Oko with Finny sadly. And I need at least one, or depending on that, two Iron Head turns chips on him to bring him in range of my Kuro Black. 
What happens on those two Iron Heads is that I flinch him two times. That's why he will keep going for the Call Mind right here, because I actually I managed to flinch him two times with Iron Heads, so there were no damage on the strategy. And this is basically all the recreating which we had to do. So just to quicken it up a bit, because we had to recreate a lot. We had a lot to see, so we decided these first three tunes, let's make it a bit quicker so we don't see again. But either way, in the original, I flinched him here two times. And after I hit him two times with Iron Head, I decided to U-turn out um, versus this uh, Finny. Since now he was in range of my Q Black, the Fusion Bolt, for example. I want to U-turn out into my Azuma right here, but after the second flinch, he actually decided to switch out right here into his Mega Aggron, which I get to U-turn on. So, and now we are basically back in how the original game went. So, I had U-turn on this Mega Aggron, and of course, my best switch into Mega Aggron is the one thing I have, which can Oko this thing, or guaranteed Oko this thing, or at least get out, which is my Mr. Man, my Landris, which of course gets this thing out with. The Earth Power, but of course he does have the Flygon, which is immune to uh, the Earth Power, so I decided to go straight for the Yurton here, predicting to switch out, keeping up the momentum in my favor, which exactly happens. We do hit the Flygon with the Yurton right here, so a decent amount of damage since we are uh, minus defense, but at least we uh, are not minus attack. Of course, not investment still, but either way, we do switch out on the Amanda uh, Bus, which of course is the objective thing and allows us to just go for Yurton once again. He does go for his own Yurton, which of course does very little damage to us. Said we do not have a rocky helmet, but yeah, we get a slow U-turn off and basically get the momentum back our favor. He goes once again back into his Mega Aggron. And we just keep U-turning, and this is the cycle. Let's keep the cycle going, basically. He's an Aggron. We U-turn out right back into our Landris. This time I decide actually to switch it up, though I didn't want to go straight for the U-turn again and him staying in or something like that, since I'm choice scarf on my Landris. I decide this time actually to go for the Earth Power in case he wants to break me going for U-turn or something like that. Of course, now I switch. He does switch out, but thankfully not in the flag. and actually switches into his Tapu Fini, and I can hit that thing with an Earth Power, which is, uh, yeah, which is very nice. This like can see right here, after this Earth Power damage, it sadly won't KO this thing, but it does a lot of damage to this thing, which is basically brings it in range of anything. And yeah, we already saw it has leftovers. So, to KO this thing, I decided to just go for a second Earth Power right here. He doesn't know yet that I'm Choice Scarf, so I don't know if he would risk switching out. Uh, he does know and does go into Flygon, which is of course sad for us, because that thing is of course immune to the Earth Power. And that means he got a free switch in, into his Flygon, and uh, yeah. That means for us, we're gonna hard switch out into our Mandibus, since uh, this probably should tell him now that we are not Choice Scarf. Uh, that we are Choice Scarf, actually, since we didn't go for U-turn. But anyway, we hard switch into our Mandibus, and he does go for the Ruse, which is very annoying, because I've, at first I was fine. With the cycle going with U-turn into U-turn on Flygon into Mega Aggron, but he goes into a uh, thing. I go to Lando, U-turn again. It's basically the cycle. I was fine with the cycle going because I was chipping his Flygon on and his Aggron down as well. But seeing that the Flygon has roost, this cycle is basically not how we are gonna win this game, or at least not anytime soon. And that's definitely not what I want to do. I don't want this game to drag out forever by just going repeatedly for U-turn, him roosting, all this good stuff. So I actually decided, due to that, getting probably getting a bit impatient. Newton in here, not into my landers actually, so I have to switch out Newton into my Jirachi for one, to get my rocks up, so that his switching around is, uh, he gets punished for that, and for one, a little bit scouting what kind of this lander, uh, this Aggron is, because from the Newton damage from my uh, Mandibus, I had no idea, especially offensive, physically offensive, is this not offensive, is this what, whatever. So I want to go Jirachi first to get my rocks, of course I do at speed, there's no surprises there. And I expect him to go for his own rocks right here, uh, which he does, so... That, of course, is a bit annoying for my Mandibus, and I decide to go now for the Drain Punch, because like I said, I want this damage, I can actually tell now if it's a Fizzy Defensive, it's Special Defensive, it's Offensive, all this good stuff. I don't expect him to, to be able to, to do much damage to me, we of course go for Drain Punch and do very little, and this tells me this is a mainly physically Defensive uh, aggro, because especially this was a crit already, but he does have the Earthquake, which hurt my Jirachi a lot. Which, of course, will, uh, yeah, will, will it hurt a lot, like I said, but like I said, Jirachi, health on Jirachi is not as important since the Raptor was not there. The main thing Jirachi is for is going to be for the near Lego, which at this amount of health, it should still be able to check very easily. This time I go for the U-turn, predicting to go for another Earthquake, I do switch into Mr. Man, basically to scare him out again. But this will fi backfire greatly, since he will predict that and go for the Avalanche, and my Landers just goes down like that. So me getting impatient will hurt me a lot. I get a lot of damage on my Drachi, and my Landers dead, basically for only a change in rocks and getting information on what kind of aggron this is. So that was definitely not worth it. Now I have to go into the only Mon, which can KO this thing, which is of course my Kion Black, which with Terror World will ignore his filter, and I can just go for the Groundium Z. Thankfully, thankfully it does stay in. I did took a bit of time with the switch, because I didn't want to make it obvious that Kion Black is my only answer to the thing. 
But if he would have switched there, and I would have waste, quote unquote, wasted my Z ground him Z or something else, this air ground would have been a huge problem. Uh, basically, I would have had to uh, let, let another one take a lot of damage or die in order to kill it. But like you see, the ground him Z damage does go through since he's mostly physically defensive, and it's a ground him Z Earth Power from McCure Black, which is not a Vespa to be fair. It will KO, and the Mega Aaron goes down. And thankfully, got rid of this thing, but at what cost? That's definitely not what we want to do. He does switch into the Lego right here. And I don't want to hard switch anything. There actually is, if, he, if he's choice guard, there's a chance that I can lift this thing. I just go straight for the earth power. And he does just go for the power gem. Let's see, does he get the roll in his favor? And he does. This thing does go down. And he will get a speed beast boost, but it shouldn't be a problem. Especially like we see right here, he actually gets a speed boost. And that makes this thing interesting because that means, for one, this is most likely not a choice guard variant. And secondly, that means he can't be max special attack. Because if you want to be a speed boost in Neo Lego, that means he can't be max special attack. And that means since he's a plus zero with less special attack, that means my uh, Drudge can just switch in and basically take any hit and just go for Iron Head to kill this thing. But like I see, it actually does have the foul play. And I can do the Calc and I can guarantee lift this. Uh, it actually does 84 max, but I do die. And the reason I do die is that he is actually expert belt. I thought he wasn't boosting items since I didn't saw anything. I thought he was making focus slash sugar berry. Something like that, but as you can see right here, he was extra belt, and that's the only way he could kill me right there. And now it's get problematic because now I basically have to go into my Azumarill because at this point I have Mandibus left, which doesn't take a rocks plus power gem. I have the uh, Deoxys left, which of course outsped since it had uh, it would even be outspeed with one speed boost, but now it has two, so it's definitely outsped. And extreme speed is not doing anything, so I have to go to my assault vested Azumarill. And I have two options right here. I do guarantee left an expert belt. Uh, not max invested stash away from a near Lego because I'm it's all this and I'm a pretty invested in speed as well So what I can do right here is to take the sludge wave and just go for liquidation and kill this thing Or I can try to go for aqua jet and get the roll in my favor because the, since he got this rocky helmet damage on him with the rocks Aqua jet is a roll the it, 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 it's a roll to kill him uh, Depending on his investment if it's my favor or my favor or guaranteed kill whatever. I don't know what his investment is but what I actually decided to do is to take my chances with Aqua Jet, try to KO him, because that's basically the only way I can win this game. Because if I can't KO him with Aqua Jet right here, I will be taking a Sludge Wave, and my, my Azumarill will be way too low, and then it's not check to kill him with the Kyurem anymore, and then Kyurem basically just wins, because in, together with the rest of the mons he has, uh, Deoxys has a good chance of sweeping his team, but the only problem is that the Flygon is still at full health. The best I have to... I do... Oak, like, for Deoxys in general, I do Oko the Kyurem Black with low kick, I do Oko the Gothitelle with knockoff, I do Oko the Finny at the amount of range it's at, but I don't KO the Flygon. And of course, if anything is Scarf, like the Kyurem is Scarf or something like that, then my Deoxys just dies to that as well. So my only hope basically right here is to go for Aqua Jet, get the roll, or get the crit, or something and KO this thing and be able to win the game. He do go for Aqua Jet, he gets very low health and he does live. So that is very troublesome for you. Now it's very dire, looking very dire for us. He does go for Sludge Wave because I re tank that barring a crit, but he does get the poison, which is still annoying because that means I will die in two rounds due to poison. Or a next one basically, since I do already get one round of poison, I can go for another Aqua Jet right here. But I will die through the poison, but not getting the roll is definitely what hurt me more because uh, even though Azura will go down, and I basically could have gone for Aqua Jet on one more thing. Which, I mean, I guess if he would have gone to Flygon, it would have been awesome because getting chip on Flygon would have brought him in range of my Deoxys. But Azumarill does go down, and now my only hope of winning here is to get somehow get some chip on the Flygon before I go into my Deoxys. So basically, my only hope of winning is that he goes into Flygon right here, I go into my Mandibus, and I get some rocks rounds of it on him or some Brave Foot damage and stuff like that. So I decided to go into Mandibus. Sadly, he does go into Tapu Fini. And that basically means GG now. I mean, there is a chance that I'm faster than him since I'm, uh, if he's no speed, but since he had Call Mind, he's most likely an offensive for me, so I don't expect to be faster than him. You can just go for Moonblast right here, die there, and then go into Kyurem, and then it's over, because if he in goes into Kyurem, he can just uh, Ice Beam me, kill me, and then I only have Deoxys left, which doesn't kill the Flygon, which KOs me on the other hand. Or if I switch into Deoxys on the Ice Beam, I of course die, so... Sadly, it looks like it's GG. I, I actually, he is actually faster, but he does go for Acro, which was very surprising on my part. I thought he would try to go for Moonblast right here, just KOing me and stuff like that. But he does go for Acro, which was very surprising. Like I said, I go for Brave Bird right here, and I can KO this thing. So at least I get the score a bit lower as, as well. And uh, yeah, we get rid of the Finny. But now he does, of course, I get some left also recovery, like you can see right here. But that, that's not bringing me out of range of out of an Ice Beam from a Kyurem White. So you can just go straight into his Kyurem right here. And uh, yeah, if he clicks Ice Beam right here, he wins the game. I just go for u in case something weird happens and he doesn't click Ice Beam for some reason. Because that would give me a switch into my Deoxys. And something weird happens, actually! He does go for Roost, and I have no idea why he did that. Uh, he does go for Roost. I get my free u off and I get my switch 
into my Deoxys. And we are back in the game. There's again, once again, there's still a shot that we can win this game. Even though it was looking very badly for us. We can go into Wacky Wave and your Flaming Mal Arm, Flaming Tube Man. Right here. And uh, yeah, we can just kick No Kick. We kill this. If Deox if he goes into the Goffertail, that dies to knock off. If he goes into Vigon, we get a chip we need. We can just go straight for the Low Kick. And like you can see right here, since he did go for Roost, we already know he wasn't Scarfed because who Scarfs himself into Roost. And yeah, we killed the Cure right. And uh, now it's only the Deoxys and the uh, the Flygon and the Goffertail left. And even though I might not be able to kill the Flygon. My Mandibus potentially can beat both of these 1v1. He does go into uh, Goffertail first, and I was a bit surprised because I could just go for knockoff and KO the thing. But like you can see right here, he does have the Cobra Berry, so we'll, he will be able to lift the knockoff. But yeah, we'll go for his own foul play to kill my Deoxys. But like I said, my Mandibus still is at, it's, it's not as healthy, but we have a shot at beating these last months 1v1. Since he is not a Scarf Goffertail, I have a good chance of being faster with my Mandibus than him. Because like I said, I'm a speed, uh, relatively speedy Mandibus, I'm fast enough to outspeed a modest uh, Mangazone. So if he's not very speedy on Goffertail, we do outspeed. And if we should do outspeed, we get the Roost off. And now we have to see, does he have Toxic? Because if he has Toxic, this is of course GG. And we, even though Misty Terrain's up, we are flying, so we can't get Toxic. But no, he has Thunderbolt, which gas Close to nothing since we roosted and we are bulky mandibus. We get our leftovers back and we are guaranteed fast in the city. We can't just go for Brave Bird, kill this mandibus, and then it's only 1v1 versus the Flygon. We only saw roost and U turn so far of the Flygon, but depending on what moves he has, we might actually be able to beat this thing 1v1. We do get rid of the Gothitelle, and now it's Mandibus Pow versus the Flygon, which only showed, like I said, U turn and roost so far. If his other moves are uh, it's Earthquake, which of course a Mewtwo would be great, and depends, does he have Outrage, does he have Dragon Claw, does he have Dragon Dance, what is his last move, what is, he most likely will have Earthquake, that's I'm assuming, what is his last move, he does go for Roost versus me, okay, that makes me all very hopeful, okay, that means he most likely doesn't have a really good uh, attack to hit me with, and I just go straight for my own Roost right here, because if he was going for Outrage, which was the only thing which was really scary, I had to try to Roost up on him and basically make him hit himself in Confusions a few times. But he did go for Roost himself right here. I just go for Brave Bird and he does go for U-Turn versus me. And that makes me very hopeful because that means that U-Turn is most likely the only move he has to hit me. And uh, we actually end up uh, going into a very nice stall wall right here. In which we try to beat this Flygon 1v1 which will be Roosting. He will try to beat me 1v1 and I will try to be Roosting. Uh, I don't have to worry about getting Earthquake on my Roost since he's faster than me. So that is not a problem. But uh, spoiler alert. This game is now getting very stalled. This will take a long time to end. And I should uh, end up talking to definitely a lot versus this. So yeah, you probably can see that in live narration. But since how this is going currently, like if U-Turn is really the best thing he has, uh, he might have more PP than me. But my Brave Birds do way more damage to him. Like two Brave Birds and he's forced to roost one time. And I, I already started, once I saw that I had to do this 1v1, I started counting the roosts he has. And since I only have a roost, I have a roost at way less scenarios, especially since I have leftovers as well, which give me recovery as well, even though I get very fit recoil with the leftovers, I do have to roost less. And in my mind, it's looking like I will actually win this 1v1, since he's way, for, forced uh, way more often to roost. And basically, once he's out of roost, I win this game. Where on the other hand, I, I don't have to roost as often, since yeah, he has only u to hit me. And uh, yeah, I will eventually win this 1v1. But uh, yeah, we talked about I talked about this with Daphne. I uh, said him that I think I will win this. Like I even told him how many PPs I have and all this good stuff. It turns out he actually had, did have more PP than me. So if it would end up in a PP war, he would actually win since uh, I would have less PP than him and I was try starting to struggle first. But uh, yeah, like I said, in my man, mind math, I will end up winning this thing, but I definitely decided to play it out, which is fair, which I would do as well if like, my opponent could obviously be lying and just trying to make me forfeit. So I would I would definitely do it as well. He does go for Earthquake right here, so he chose our, uh, shows his third move. And uh, yeah, we just get confirmation after talking, like, he, Newton is the best thing he has with me. There's nothing else. He's not trying to bait me into getting into low health and then uh, showing the outrage. Uh, Newton is the best thing he has to hit me. And uh, yeah, this thing will play out now. And I will... Okay, can we speed it up? Can we speed up? Where's the speed up button? Um, let me see. Uh, nope, that was the wrong button. God damn it! Wah! Wah! What did I do? What did I do? Okay, I will probably add something else because I just saw a Discord chat you shouldn't see. Um, how can we make this faster? Mm, okay, he, that that's how we can make this faster. Okay, that's just that's just the wrong button as well. How can I make this faster? Oh, that that's what. That's how. That's how. Yes. Yes. Boom, and even faster. We want to go even faster than this. 
Nice. Sorry that it was a bit uh, weird right here to go faster. Now uh, let's like double the speed and basically while this in, in the background is going on, as uh, like I see, it's still it will still be a few minutes. You already saw how long the video is, how long it's still taking. But uh, yeah, spoilers. I uh, will end up uh, winning this uh, war with many of us, like I uh, figured. Um, the legs a bit right here, probably because it's so fast. But either way, I will end up winning this war, and we will actually win one over Stephanie Aim. And let's give us a chance to talk a bit about the Smash while this is playing in the background. And let's make it actually even a bit, a bit more faster. Uh, let's make it double the speed. There. Oh, no, once more, once more. Boom. There we go, double the speed. But yeah, why? And uh, I, I only did win. Like, let's, let's talk about the elephant in the room. I only did win because Stephanie. Sadly, like as much as it it probably is annoying for him, he choked the game away. He just had to go for I like the 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 Finny play didn't matter as much since even if he could go for Boom Blast, he potentially would have killed the Mandibus. I still would have had the Oxus Poison Jab, I kill him. And uh, yeah, then he would have gone flying on to not or into the Govatel actually, since he had Cobra Varies, he would have guaranteed live as well. So the one play which was the guaranteed 100 percent choke play was the ice beam of Kyum. Uh, the roost of Kyum, not ice beaming there. Because if he ice beamed, he would have killed my Mandibus, or I would have killed my Deoxys. And if I only have Mandibus, I, like I can't win because Mandibus would still lose to Kyum then. And if I lose my Deox, if I lose my uh, my Mandibus, obviously my Deoxys alone couldn't win. Since one, I can't kill the Flygon, which I, to be fair he didn't knew, but he still had to go off tail in the back of Cobra Berry, which, like I said, I couldn't beat one v one. So that was definitely the the play which cost them the game. Definitely to watch his side though. To get the full thought process behind it, uh, he's in the, in the message just told me he wanted to be out of range of like a low kick or super power on the axis, which uh, makes sense, like obviously. But to be fair, even at full health, he wouldn't been out of range since like we saw low kick over him. But to be fair, he didn't know I was life for. But uh, yeah, why did this game end the way where I had to rely on my opponent choking? That is mainly due to the uh, the few turns where I where I already mentioned I got impatient. That was a very uh, what's called? Um, um, I would say bad turn. I, I, I think thinking. I want to uh, say another adjective, but I'm not. Uh, I don't get the properly, properly English term for that. But anyway, it was that was the uh, that was the important turn from my side. I got very impatient, got a lot of damage on my Jirachi, which brought in range of, uh, foul play on the uh, near Lego. Like props, of course, to Deathly for bringing exactly that near Lego. Said like expert bell speed boosting near Lego. Very big threat versus my team. I did not see that coming. But uh, basically, me allowing to get Jirachi so low with the Earthquake versus uh, uh, Aggron, and especially going into Landris after him reading that, going for the Avalanche, which to be fair was a great read on his part, but it was as well, it was a read uh, which he didn't add. Like, it was not a high risk play on his side, because even if I stay in and go for another Drain Punch, but I do another 10% to him, and he does a 10% to me, and then he can still go for Earthquake after. So that was definitely more of a. a like, it was a misplay on my part as well. Great read uh, from Deathly. But I probably should have gone to something else there. Like if I predict an earthquake or slash, I should have thought about avalanche as well. I should have gone to Kieran there because there was no way he's going for heavy slam versus a uh, versus a Drachi. So I think going to Kieran there was the safer play. Or in general, just not getting impatient and trying to get a Brox versus him and starting what he is. That was mainly the mistake on my side, which got it so close. Thankfully or luckily for me, the the plays happened, which I already talked about, and we still ended up winning the game. But it's definitely not how we want to win our games, like relying on our opponent to make mistakes. So yeah, we will have to improve uh, uh, going into matches forward, because especially last week we had a more kind of lucky win versus Aaron. Now we had a win because our opponent uh, didn't play optimally. So that's definitely not how we want to win our games. And next we are going to face Leo and his turn Redagon. So that is definitely going to be a tough opponent where we have to step up our game a lot. But this game, even though we still managed to win very closely, is a very good reminder for me to not, basically to still, like even though we have a good record, we still have to, we still have to be in the game, we still have to play good, we still have to think about what we are doing, we still have to consider risk reward on every play we make, and even think about the opponent, like what play could they make, uh, like I didn't even thought about that he could go for ice move, but in retrospect it was like a no drawback play for him, like at least close to no drawback play, so... Sorry, consider that. But either way, that is the end of the match. Uh, we do manage to win a 1-0 in this game, but it's definitely not a game we want to think about fondly. That's more of a reminder that we have to still keep our best, uh, play the best we can, basically. That's what I'm gonna say. But yeah, if you still did enjoy this video, of course leave a like, comment, subscribe, you know, and hit up my opponent for his live set of the match. Like I said, there will probably be a lot of uh, cuts and stuff like that because we see it a lot. And uh, yeah, check out the guys I mentioned at the beginning, but that's all for me. I will see you another time. Ciao.